What actually is the Digital Factory? Well, Sonia, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and having this conversation with you. I believe uh, Digital Factory is not a new terminology. It has been there for quite some time. Some would call it a Digital Factory. Others would call it uh, a Digital Hub. Some would call it a Digital Garage. But essentially, it's a platform to power rapid delivery. It's a space to foster innovation, to embrace new ways of working, to promote transparency, to promote teamwork, and also adopt agile ways of working. Ultimately, with the objective to deliver quickly on our promise and our aspirations. The Digital Factory in al Inma has been established one year ago, and it is responsible to spearhead the digital transformation of the bank. It's a department responsible to manage the entire digital structure with its associated strategy, business development, product innovation, experience management, performance management, and so on. So how did you go about establishing the Digital Factory? How was well, the beginning? Uh, it was an exciting journey. It was not easy. At the beginning, we were contemplating different approaches, and we have debated a number of approaches in which how to start and where to start. And we ultimately uh, eventually landed into an approach where to start small and scale fast. The objective behind that, or the reason behind that, is basically to minimize and minimize resistance and also to ease the integration and adoption of these new practices within the organization. So we've started with a clear slate, no baggage. We have uh, started small with one project, a small team, one project, one mission. Then we've looked at building an operating model, a relevant operating model, an operating model that is suitable for what we want to do and for the organization overall. So we have dictated how the team will operate, what is the composition and structure of squads, how are the tribes defined, what are the practices and tools that they need to follow within the digital factory, but also importantly, how will this factory interact within the wider organization, whether it is with IT, whether it is with marketing, whether it is with uh, other business functions or enabling functions with the bank. So that was the second important uh, point that we have addressed while establishing a digital factory. The third point is basically sponsorship. Sponsorship is key and important. It needs to be supported from the top of the organization in order to drive this massive transformation. When we look at uh, the board, the CEO, and the senior manager of the bank, we have spent a lot of time in communicating the values, the objectives, and the advantages of doing a digital factory, and why are we doing it, and what benefits that we will realize by having a digital factory in place. And finally, which is among the most important points, is the people the talent that we have. Okay, we've looked for talent from different industries, different places, to bring in a new DNA that can champion this transformation within the bank. First of all, I feel that Digital Factory is different from the other departments in the bank. How different it is, and how did you go about uh, to establish the operating model between you and the others that has allowed you to be so successful while the others were still working in the old way? Basically, it's all around people. It's the main core value that we have. And when I say people, it's the people from within the factory and beyond, beyond of within the bank or customers as well. So we have embraced practices around empowerment, enablement. We have encouraged our people to have a tendency of experimentation, to do mistakes. It's okay to learn and learn from mistakes, extract learnings from them, get aspirations and move on. Transparency is key as well. So we always encourage our people not to shy away from escalations, be transparent. This will give us better visibility on how things are happening in the ground and what support do they need in order to, for us to achieve what we want to achieve. So that was uh, when it comes to people. When it comes to customers, it's crucial and important to work on what customer wants, not what we think we want. So developing propositions and solutions that resonates with customers. We've created a beta community that we test with them our journeys, our experiences, our products that we have, we are launching or we are about to launch. So putting the customer at the heart of everything we do, plus putting our people first are the two main ingredients that allows it to be successful. The ways of working that are there in the digital factory are a little bit different from what the bank has been used to in the past. Do you think that the new ways of thinking, focusing on customers, looking for the customer's eyes at the value that we deliver has radiated outside of Digital Factory? In fact, yes, in a very short period of time. Just let me start by the technologies that we use and the tools that we have, uh, we have embraced and we've installed within the factory. It's now being adopted by the wider organization of IT in the bank. When we look at a beta community creation, we've seen our marketing department also working on establishing something similar. 
when we look at the squad compositions that we have created and bringing all people together in one space, in one floor, working to deliver on a certain product or a certain objective in agile ways of working is something that we are seeing propagating with IT. We're seeing propagating with retail. We're seeing resonating with corporate as well. So it has started to see the practice of digital factory being adopted by the wider organization, which is very good, but we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go. The impact went much beyond of what you just do here because from what I understand, you cannot really exist without others helping and supporting you. That's a very important thing. But I just wanted to switch the gear for a moment and talk about a bigger transformation that you've also have introduced into the digital factory, especially in the context of uh, Saudi Arabia and the diversity that is there in the digital factor. Can you tell us how the whole thing came about? Let me explain to you our recruitment strategy and how did we go about it. So we wanted to start quickly uh, and we wanted to start, as I said, small but quick. So we've launched two parallel tracks, a track where we have relied on vendors and we've relied on contractors to ramp up quickly. But also we have launched a parallel track in which we are looking for people to recruit within the bank. And we managed to scale up very quickly from 15 at the beginning, all the way to 106 months. And that's something that I take a lot of pride in. And while looking and while doing the hunt, we were not only bonding ourselves with bankers. So we were looking at people from different industries, people with different backgrounds, um, whether it is companies, fintechs, startups, government officials, uh, telcos, everything. This is to create the diversity. In addition to that, we also looked at diversity in terms of backgrounds and nationalities. So you see today a team of composition from different backgrounds, different nationalities, different thoughts, and this is all to stimulate creative thinking. And as a result, we created an environment that is completely different than the environment that we see in the organization today. And when it comes to women participation, we were always looking for talent, and it turns out to be we have a lot of talented women. They represent today more than 30% of our workforce, way above the average that we see in the bank and beyond. I wanted also to ask you, It is very common when you do the digital transformation, as you said, you start small, but then you scale up and you do more. Can you tell us a little bit more? It is a big task, but this is all stemming from the strategy that we have developed for uh, our digital transformation. We have put in place a strategy that touches upon each and every vertical of the bank that covers the entire spectrum of any digital, typical digital transformation that we see, whether it is digitizing the bank in terms of enhancing customer experiences, improving our multi-channel delivery, enhancing our digital sales, maximizing contribution of digital to the bottom line, improving our MPS scores and customer satisfactions. That's one vertical only. Then we look at the other vertical, it comes to venturing into new business and leapfrog by innovation, creating propositions to attract and acquire specific segments. How do we go beyond normal banking? How do we embrace open banking, for example? How do we build ecosystems? How do we leverage the external ecosystem to accelerate our digitalization agenda. Many things to do has been translated into a number of initiatives and we have an ambitious strategy. We have a vision to be the fastest and the most convenient bank. So we needed to move fast. We needed to fundamentally change how we run our business. We needed to create an engine that constantly challenges the status quo, reevaluate how business is conducted, how processes are defined, how experiences are reimagined, how quick we deliver and all of that. So putting all of this in context, we needed to move fast. We needed to scale up quickly, and we equipped ourselves with the capabilities to do that. When it comes to the people, when it comes to modernizing our infrastructure, and one important aspect that we've kept in mind, that we build as we progress. It's not necessarily to create the foundation first and go with the typical way and then build on top of it, no. We build the foundation and always continue to deliver value to our customers. That's why we managed to scale quickly and also to deliver on a number of uh, initiatives that we have as part of the roadmap. We started with one initiative, now with one tribe. Today we have four tribes running and around eight squads operational within the factory. I would ask, did it come without any challenges? And obviously, <laughs> obviously it is. It's full of challenges and it's expected. And we faced a number of challenges from different angles, but I can pinpoint two main, main items. One is talent and looking for talent. And I always end up with mentioning a lot of times talents and people and how important they are because without them, we will not be able to do what we've done. So looking for the right skill set and given the fact that we are seeing talent scarcity across the globe, so it has always been a challenge. We have also not only found challenges in recruitment, but also retaining our talent. It's a small pool with many sharks. So retaining our talents was also a challenge. In fact, in certain period of time, our turnover 
was a bit above the average that we typically saw. And the way we've added this is by having a digital employee value proposition that was not only focusing on pay, but also on creation of opportunities. How do we create opportunities for our people? How do we build on capabilities? What level of training do they need? And what level of flexibility that they want to balance work and life? So we have flexible working hours. We have remote working uh, days. Uh, we have ceremonies as well. So. This is all a reaction or a strategy that we have put you know, to manage our talent properly. But that's the first challenge. The second challenge is basically a mindset and culture. You would imagine that in a, in a typical uh, bank, uh, a conventional bank, it's not easy to change a mindset in such a short period of time. That's why it took a lot of time in aligning the wider organization. It took us a lot of time to uh, embrace them, to engage them, uh, to make them feel part of the success. And that's we genuinely do. We bring them into the digital factory. We collaborate with them. We seriously take their feedback. We engage them. We iterate with them. That is uh, the adoption of the digital factory or is the or minimize the resistance and make people more comfortable. And what would be the one advice that you would give to the people who are embarking on the digital transformation journey, they are starting the digital attackers, they're basically changing the status quo. What, what would that be? It's not one. I can, I can say multiple, but I will leave it to the audience and listeners to choose. The first one is basically don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out all the details of the journey. It's important to start quick, learn as you go, be flexible, modify, and move on. The value that you get from this approach is much better than spending a lot of time trying to understand all the details of the initiative or the, or the project that you have. The second advice is basically around resilience. We need to be resilient. We need to be persistent. The road is full of challenges, and you manage, but to always keep the end state in mind, keep the end goal in mind. And if there is a will, there is a way. So, but as long as you are resistant, uh, resistant and resilient in that. Maybe the last point is, it's important to have autonomy, but don't fall into the trap of isolation within the organization. So always keep your stakeholders engaged, have the flexibility, have autonomy to deliver and move fast, but also keep them engaged and aligned and have mutual goals on what you have. What is the future of the digital factor? Continue to deliver on our promise, continue to deliver on our aspiration. It's something that uh, we'll be continuing to focus on. I believe in our roadmap, we have a pipeline with a number of initiatives, huge, big initiatives, as I said, whether it is on t market tilting propositions for specific segments, whether it is under the innovation space, whether it is on multiple fronts. I would like it to have a profound impact on society by developing digital solutions and capabilities and by building the talents of tomorrow. I wish you all the success. Thank you very much, Sami. 